Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm back with another video on BNA. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to see is this. So this is a coaxial cable. If you can see this, I got it from mini circuit. Actually, I want to see this. If I make, if I use this coaxial cable to make a connection, uh, this is both male to male SMA, SMA based coaxial cable. As you can see this, both sides are male. So if I were to use this to make a connection between my devices, uh, what kind of a loss I expect from this? So basically I'm trying to calculate the losses associated with this coaxial cable. Now, I'm slight in a dilemma uh, because when you're making measurements in RF, small measurements, even a small error in terms of dBs will play a key role. So for that reason, what I'm doing, since in my uh, VNA, both cables are like male to male. So I'm using an SMA female connector, which is like this. This is the connector that I'm using right now, which is actually an SMA female to female connector. Right here. Both sides are female. This is the connector I'm using to make a connection here. All right. So before I even test this cable, which I have here, right here. The first thing I need to do, I need to actually find out how much loss is there due to this connector. So I can subtract it at the end. Uh, this is the basic way I do measurements when it comes to RF. I'll try to find out how much loss incurred by these connectors or these adapters. Then I'm going to try to measure how does this coaxial cable is behaving. Because both of these are like male to male. So I need this connector on both sides of my VNA right here. So for that reason, what I'm doing right now, so I have my connector which is connected right now. So I'm looking at an S11 parameter now. So the, for that, so this is right now, this is connected as you can see it on my in my picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at S11. So when I scroll, I, I'm going to call my marker in. All right. So I'm just going to call my marker. Uh, my markers are right here and I'm just going to go over this with the slider. So, so when I move this around, you can clearly see there will be a change in frequency at the same time. Uh, the gain in terms of dB is also there. Yeah, if you can clearly see this, let me just move this out here. All right. So when I move this around, so this VNA is rated from 100 kilohertz, as you can clearly see, 100 kilohertz all the way up to 8.5 gigahertz. So when I move this around, everywhere you go, when the frequency is increasing, the 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 return loss that you're seeing is actually below negative 10 dB. So this is good. So this 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 is good, all right? So in terms of uh, impedance matching, it is perfectly okay. It's actually perfectly fine because uh, it's rated for 50 ohms and my VNA is also rated for 50 ohms. So even though if I go further across here, it is still below negative 10 dB. So this is a negative 10 dB line. So I'm still good. So I'm good to go. So now uh, the other thing that I need to, so if I go to measure, uh, so if since this is a two port network, and it's just an adapter that I'm using to make measurements of my coaxial cable. In, uh, I'm going to make the measurement of these coaxial cable. Now the next step is going to be, so according to, because diagonally S11 should be equal to S22. And indeed it is a similar type of a return loss graph. Return loss versus uh, frequency, almost the same. Also at the same time, S12s and S21s should be same. Uh, just to remind you what S12s are uh, from port number two. So S12 is actually from port two. So port two is going to be this side, from port two to one. So since these connectors are just passive connector, you can connect it either side. There is no polarity. So you can connect it either on port one to port two, port two to port one. The graph should be exactly the same. Yes, I am do seeing a dip around. So if I were to move around, so this is the loss that I need to subtract when I'm making that measurement. So as you can clearly see, up till 
up till right now up till like 755 megahertz this connector is giving you a loss of 0.34 db and when the frequency is getting uh, is increasing the maximum loss these connectors just just using the connector is giving you about negative 1 negative 1.8 negative 2 and there is a dip negative 2.2 the maximum loss these connector will give you about negative 2.2 so so this, these connectors you can connect it either on whichever side you want so s12 if i'm looking at s12 right now s21 should be exactly the same and indeed it is because it's a diagonal matrix so s11 should be s22 s12 should be s21 in a case of our connector that i'm using so i know i expect a loss of about negative 2.2 so negative 2.2 this is the loss that I would normally see by just using one of these connectors now the setup is going to be something like this I'm gonna unscrew this guy right I'm gonna unscrew this and I'm gonna on both sides I have to use two of these connectors because this cable is male the other side is female so in order for me to test this this cable right here I need to connect two of these guys so I should expect in my measurement the the, the detection the detection of uh, loss that I need to do is actually negative 2.2 dB for one connector and negative 2.2 dB for the another another connector so it's, it would be around negative 4.4 dB this is the loss that I need to duck from my overall measurement when I'm looking at the behavior of this coaxial cable when I'm looking at a behavior of this coaxial cable so let me go ahead and do this real quick so basically what I'm doing right now I'm unscrewing one of the one of the ports and I'm inserting a coaxial cable on one side and I'm gonna so that's why you're seeing this graph a little bit crazy and this is my coaxial cable basically I'm trying to test my coaxial cable all right so this is good on the other hand I'm doing exactly the same thing because both sides are male and also the VNA side are also male so I'm just making a connection real quick uh, just give me a second because uh, otherwise I have to look for a spanner alright so let's look at the connection that I just made alright so this is the connection so I have my VNA cable that is going through a female to female connector that is going to my coaxial cable on port 2 I have my uh, the, uh, the coaxial cable with a connector in the middle and then I have my coaxial cable uh, the VNA cable which is connected to my port 2 right here so port 1 is connected right here via adapter and then coaxial cable then an adapter then a coaxial cable that is going to port 2 so now let's look at it now I can see a change in my graph so let's look at s11 does s11 changes oh yeah it does it did change so if I were to move my marker uh, so let's just put marker uh, let me exit out from here so let's look at this so from we were good up till here if you were to look at it so at 5.95 gigahertz um, I uh, were good the impedance matching was perfectly fine and as soon as I increase my frequency now the impedance matching impedance matching was a little bit off now it's less than negative 10 dB so at these frequencies I don't want to use this setup but there is also a dip at 6.3 gigahertz we're good but normally what I'll do uh, I'll try to avoid I will try to avoid this region to operate in from here to here so from I think uh, around uh, 5 or 6 gigahertz all the way up to 8.5 gigahertz if I were to use this setup I try to avoid it uh, measure let's look at s22 s22 should be symmetric which looks symmetric to me now let's look at s12 which I'm concerned with all right so the maximum loss that I was getting what was with just one connector was about negative 2.2 now I have two of these so now the total loss is about negative 4.4 .4 DB now with the help with this cable there 
I am getting some additional losses as well. So right now, we're getting about negative 3. Now there's a huge dip here. I'm getting a loss of about negative uh, negative 9, uh, about negative 10 dB. So I'm almost touching negative 10 dB. So wherever my impedance matching was uh, going off, same thing with S11, that is also going off. So I want to avoid this region. So from, from 6 gigahertz all the way up to 8.5 gigahertz, I will try to avoid this. And then from here, uh, I would know uh, not much of a loss is coming in. Or I can go up to negative 4.4 dB. So up till here, 6.3. Because I know these these two things, negative 4.4 dB is actually coming from those two adapters that I have used to make a connection between them. So up till here, so we're, we're good. At lower frequencies, I'm getting a beautiful graph. It's almost exactly the same, even though these are like uh, cheap connectors, but they are still giving me a very good loss. I mean, a very good uh, uh, linear and, and without much of a dip. S21 should be exactly the same. All right, so I can also find out the, uh, let's look at the impedance as well. So let's look at the impedance. When I look at Z, let's look at the impedance. So this is, so at 6.3, I was getting about, if you can clearly see, it's around 251 ohms, 251 ohms. And you're seeing these dips. So, and if I want to look at S11, so the S11 would tell me a clear picture because at 5, so the, you, you are somewhere. So, if you were to look at the scale, this is around negative 75, neg, uh, sorry, not negative 75, 25 ohms, then 50 ohms. So, our connector is quite good from this region all the way up to this region. This is staying at about 50 ohms. So, this is what I want. Impedance matching is perfectly fine at lower frequencies up till 5.1 or 6 gigahertz. Uh, but you can start seeing these fluctuations as the frequency is getting higher and higher and higher and higher. So you want to avoid these region or you want to make sure that you compensate for that loss that is being incurred uh, by by making connection between adapters and the cable itself. So, so these are some of the things uh, that I would like to show you and I wanted to show you regarding the adapters and the connectors. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget to leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, in future, uh, there's also a connector I just received and it was there in one of my components. It was in my uh, jammer. Uh, that is actually a attenuator, 3 dB attenuator by mini circuit, which I was using it, one of those jammers. Uh, I think I've made a video already on attenuators, but uh, this is just to show you. This is my mini circuit. It's a 3 dB attenuator. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.